What's up guys, Jackson here from the Toaster Bros, and today we're going to be seeing how much we can overclock this mineral cooled 9590. Hope you guys enjoy it. Alright, so just as a disclaimer, don't expect anything amazing from this video. If you're doing research and just kind of from um, an AMD perspective, this processor really is not going to be able to be overclocked that much, whether it's in mineral oil or air-cooled or not. With something like this, it's basically a rebranded 8350. Um, it's already, an 8350 has been overclocked a bunch, essentially. That's really the only difference. And so they made it to where um, the wattage went up automatically with it. Like it went from a 125 watt to a 220 watt because it's an 8350 overclocked a bunch. Um, and they did a couple of other small things too. That's really the only difference, and that's why if you get an 80 8350, there's really no point of upgrading to 9590 because you can basically almost make it the equivalent of a 9590 by doing some overclocking and some tweaking. So with that being said, let's go ahead and see what we can do stably. Alright, so first test we did was the good old Cinebench R15. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the results here. I have the old results also right below it. Let me get that focused for you guys. So you can see right here we have the 9590 at 4.7 GHz. Now right up here, it's at 4.89 GHz. Now, I do want you to know that this processor standard comes at 4.7 and then actually turbo boost or turbo cores up to 5 GHz standard. Now what I have it right now is to where it basically um, just keeps the same ratio and I think it uh, turbo cores to like uh, 5.23 GHz. So it's a little bit of a higher turbo core. Now as far as this test goes, I'm not too sure if it actually uses the turbo core or not. Um, I believe it does, but just because of how it says 4.89, which is the standard clock before it turbo boosts, um, I'm just going to go with that. So I was really only able to get uh, 0.2 gigahertz out of it. And I tried all the other frequencies and um, you know even adjusting the actual voltages and there it goes to sleep. Um, I could not get it to stably overclock. Every time I would do it, um, I could only get a little bit more and then when I tried to do the actual test, the computer would just freeze, which is a sign that your overclock is unsuccessful. Um, technically for a solid overclock, you have to be able to run it for like 24 hours of um, stress testing and it can't crash. So I'm not gonna do all that. <laughs> um, but that's technically what you're supposed to do to get a solid overclocking, and it obviously did not pass that with what I had gone before. So, that kind of concludes this test. Um, I know you guys were thinking I'm going to do more, but the reason I'm not going to is because it's it's a 9590 that's an 8350 basically rebranded. Um, nothing against the 9590, it's a great processor, and it's super strong out of the box, but the problem is, you can't do much more with it. Um, like I said, not trying to bash in any way, um, but just because the Cinebench test only went up a little bit, there's really no point in trying to do um, gaming tests because first of all those um, change too often if you don't have a simulator that will actually do the same exact thing over and over again which we don't have uh, with the previous overclocking. Um, we just have basically games that we run around in and test so I don't have a steady benchmark to test that with besides the Cinebench one which even then, the score didn't go up enough, and I couldn't overclock it enough to where it's really going to make a difference in FPS. You might get um, a few FPS more. I'm going to say a couple would be fair. Um, I don't think it'll stay the same, just so you guys know that. I think you will get a little bit more out of it, but not enough to where it's going to be worth making a whole entire video on. Um, so if you want to get more performance, but for better price, I was just going with an 8350, if I to be honest. 9590 was kind of one of those things that they released, and it was really cool when it came out. It was like, wow, that's a cool concept, taking an 8350 and um, basically pre-overclock it for the user. But for the price and everything, I would just go with an 8350 and overclock it yourself. If you're um, feeling it, get like a water cooler. That's basically what I'm running right now, and you can overclock the crap out of those with no problem. But with this, because it's already overclocked, you really can't get much more out of it without breaking something. So we hope you guys kind of learned some from this video. Sorry it was kind of short and um, maybe unexpecting or expecting. I don't really know. Uh, I guess put in the comments what you guys thought. Did you guys think this was actually going to be successful when I was going to get like 6 gigahertz out of it because it was mineral cooled? Or did you think that something was going to restrict it in the first place and make it to where I really couldn't overclock anymore anyways? So let us know in the comments below and stay tuned for further videos.